Hi everyone, today we are going to uh, start a new topic and that will be on uh, eddy current testing. So like uh, what we do always, uh, we will first uh, learn about uh, the basic principle of uh, this particular technique and then go on to see how it is done. Okay? So let us start and uh, see what is the uh, basic underlying principle uh, behind this particular technique and then we will see how it is done as I said. So, this is the topic that we have today. In short, uh, sometime this is known as ET, which stands for eddy current testing. Now, coming back to this uh, basic uh, principle behind this. So, first uh, let us understand uh, what is uh, meant by eddy current and why it is called eddy current. Okay? Now, this name eddy, uh, it comes from a flow pattern which uh, you can see in a flowing uh, stream of liquid or gas when it encounters an obstacle. So, this uh, flow path around the obstacle in a flowing stream of liquid are called eddies. You might have seen that uh, in a flowing uh, stream of water, if the water, the flowing water encounters any obstacle, for example, uh, like a stone or like a rock, it uh, tries to go around it in a uh, circular path. Okay? So, this uh, swirling of the water around uh, this obstacle is these are known as eddies. Okay? Now, this AD current is nothing uh, but an induced current which we are going to talk about in more detail. So, the path of this uh, AD current or this induced current is similar to the path of uh, the eddies which form in a flowing stream of liquid. Okay? So, because of this uh, similarity, uh, this induced current is named as AD current. Okay? Okay, Let us say uh, you have a conductor like this. which is uh, carrying an alternating current or changing current. And if you bring a second conductor near to it, So, on the surface of the second conductor, you will have uh, induced current which will be having a flow pattern like this, as I said, which uh, resembles the eddies which form uh, on a uh, flowing stream of liquid around the obstacles when the conditions are right. Okay, now, if there is a defect on the surface, this flow pattern will be disturbed. Okay? So, on a completely defect free surface like this, you will have uh, this kind of uh, flow in this uh, particular pattern and there will be no disturbance in this flow path. But now, uh, uh, let us say there is a small uh, discontinuity on the surface, let us say there is a discontinuity over here. So, when the, when the current encounters this discontinuity, the flow pattern around this will be this stuff like this. Okay. So, there will be a change in this induced current and as a result of that, you would also see a change in this coil because the current in the coil is responsible for inducing this current. Now, if you can connect a detector to this coil which can detect this change, 
then this will tell you that uh, there is some discontinuity on the surface of the second conductor and that is how you will come to know about defects and flaws on the surface of a conductor which is being brought close to this coil which is carrying an alternating current. Okay. So, these AD currents uh, that you have they are limited to the surface only and that is why this technique also is a surface entity method. Okay. But the question here is how do you detect that change because this change because of a small discontinuity will be very small. Okay. So, if you want to detect that by a sensor connecting uh, to this coil, how do you do that? and what parameter actually you would look for to detect that change. Okay. So, this is the question that we need to answer in order to understand the basic principle behind this technique. Okay. So, let me explain that to you as to how do you uh, detect this change and what parameter is needed for that purpose. So, when you talk about induction or electromagnetic induction, you need to go back to Faraday's law. Which says that if a conductor carries a varying or a changing current, it will have uh, a changing magnetic field around it and that changing magnetic field can induce a current or induce an EMF. Okay either in the same conductor or to a second conductor uh, which is uh, close to the first conductor. Okay. So, this is known as Faraday's law which says that uh, this uh, EMF which is the induced EMF let us say if we call that induced EMF as B L this is due to the change in the magnetic flux which is uh, created by the changing current. Okay. So, you need a changing magnetic field to create this induced current or this induced EMF. Okay. So, this is known as Faraday's law of induction okay. and this is the basis of the eddy current technique as I am going to explain now. So, if you have uh, n number of uh, turns in a coil then this will be n into d phi dt where n is the number of turns. Okay. But still we are we are yet to answer uh, the question that we asked in the beginning as to what is that parameter uh, which is needed for uh, this to connect to eddy current testing. Okay. So, for that uh, apart from Faraday's law we have to consider another law which is about the direction of the induced current. Okay. So, let us say in this uh, circuit or in this conductor uh, you have a changing current flowing and because of that uh, this changing magnetic field which is uh, represented by these arrows is created. Okay. So, in order to uh, create that uh, induced EMF uh, this magnetic flux has to change it has to either increase or decrease and as a result of that change uh, you will have an induced current. But the question is uh, how do you know what will be the direction of that induced current. Okay. So, in order to know that uh, direction of the induced current you need to take the help of another law which is known as Lenz's law okay. and it states that the direction of the induced current
will be such that it will oppose any change in the magnetic field which induce the current. Okay. So, the induced current will oppose any change in the magnetic flux which uh, induce the current. Okay. So, that means, uh, when this changes, let us say uh, the magnetic flux uh, increases. So, due to this change, Uh, there will be uh, an induced current. Okay. So, that induced current uh, could be like this or it can be like this. Okay. So, you do not know uh, in which direction it can go whether it, it will go clockwise or it will go counter clockwise. So, Lenz's law will help you uh, understand the direction of the induced current uh, based upon uh, the conservation of energy. Okay. So, if you consider uh, this direction, okay, if this be the direction of the induced current, so this current will have its uh, own magnetic field and the direction of that field can be found by uh, right hand uh, thumb rule. So, if uh, this is the thumb direction of the thumb of your right hand, then the fingers will uh, point uh, uh, towards the magnetic field being generated by this current. So, if you put your thumb around this, uh, you will see the magnetic field direction will be like this. Okay. Let me uh, give a different color to this. So, this will be the direction of the field, uh, if the direction of the induced current is like this. Okay. So, that means, this field will be additive to this. So, this will be again add to this and uh, the magnetic flux will further increase, which is against the conservation of energy law. Okay. On the other hand, if you consider this direction, Okay. Then again by using uh, right hand thumb rule, you will see the direction of the field uh, in this case, the direction of the induced magnetic field will be like this and this will then try to decrease uh, this magnetic flux or this will try to oppose the increase in the magnetic flux and that is what the Lenz's law say that the direction would be such that it will oppose the change in the magnetic flux which induce the current. So, in this case when it increases then the direction will be the direction of the current will be in this direction. Okay. So, now come back to the eddy current testing. So, if this uh, carries an AC current, there will be an alternating 
magnetic field also like this due to that alternating current. which will induce uh, this current in this conductor okay and if there are any discontinuities around this induced current uh, there will be change in the induced current and as a result there will be some change in this coil uh, which needs to be detected in order to detect the defect okay so let's see what is that parameter which is needed to detect that and in order to do that we need to go to the basics of uh, flow of electric current that means we have to go back to ohms law we need to start from there and then finally with the help of that we could see what is that parameter which is uh, useful for detecting this change so ohms law we all know if you are sending a current i uh, through a resistor r then the voltage across it will be v equals to i r okay so this is well known the basic law of flow of electric current so the total uh, opposition or the total resistance offered to uh, the flow of current in this case is the resistance r okay but you could also have uh, a similar scenario but in this case the resistive element is uh, replaced by an inductive element so in that case uh, the resistance to flow of current will be the inductance which is denoted by l okay and let's call this current as il to indicate that it is uh, flowing through an inductor in this case in case of uh, ohms law if you plot uh, uh, the voltage or current then the voltage and the current are in phase okay so let's say this is the voltage and this is the current there is no phase lag uh, between the current and the voltage they are uh, completely in phase but in case of an inductor if you plot the same then you will see that uh, there is a lag between the voltage and the current which is uh, flowing through the inductor okay so this is the main difference uh, between uh, a completely resistive circuit and a completely uh, inductive circuit okay in eddy current testing uh, what we use to induce the current is a coil okay so the eddy current probe will have this coil inside and it's a coil of a conductive wire so that means that coil will have both the uh, inductance and the resistance components okay so that means we need to consider a situation wherein the 
this uh, current is going to flow both through a resistor and an inductor. So, that means you need to consider both the inductive and the resistive components. Okay, but before that, uh, let me tell you uh, here what we learned from the Lenz's law is that uh, this induced current is opposed to the change in the magnetic flux which induced it, and that introduces this uh, negative sign in the Faraday's law. So this. Uh, negative sign indicates that, that the induced current is opposed to the change of the magnetic flux which is this. Okay. So, please remember that we will come back to it uh, while deriving that parameter what we are looking for. So, now coming back to this if you uh, Consider a scenario like this uh, where both uh, uh, resistance and inductive components are there together uh, in the same conductor. Then uh, if you consider the total current, okay, then it would look something like this. So, let us say this is uh, the current uh, through the resistor So, let us say this is I r then I l will be this one. So, there is a phase lag between them and in this case the phase lag is 90 degree as you could see. Okay, so, that means uh, the total current uh, flowing through this uh, particular circuit which contains both uh, resistance as well as inductance component will be a sum of uh, these two. So, that, that means it will be uh, somewhere in between this like this. Okay. So, this total current we will call that as I z. Okay. So, here we are getting introduced to a parameter z which is known as impedance. And this now uh, represents the total resistance to the flow of current in a, uh, in a circuit like this, where you have both uh, resistance and inductance components. Okay. Yeah, so this impedance is the sum of both uh, the resistance component and the inductance component as we saw just now. So, that means it will be a vector like this. and this will be the phase angle between the resistance and the impedance. Okay. So, in the next class I will show you that uh, based upon this particular parameter impedance, we can construct uh, what is called as an impedance plane. And this is uh, what is going to form the basis for eddy current testing. Okay. So, this uh, will take some time. So, we will take it up in the next class. 
So today, uh, before we close, uh, let us take a moment to summarize. So today, first we learn about uh, the eddy current. and this is uh, nothing but the induced current on a conductive surface when you bring a current carrying conductor close to uh, a second conductive surface. Okay? And the source for uh, this eddy current as we discussed today is a changing magnetic field. which comes from a changing current or an alternating current. Okay, so that means if you have a conductor which is uh, carrying an alternating or changing current, it will have a changing magnetic field also around it. And when you bring this uh, changing magnetic field of this conductor to the close proximity of another conductive surface, then on the second conductor, this eddy currents will be induced. And we also saw that uh, these currents uh, flow in a particular pattern uh, like this. which resembles the eddies uh, which form in a flowing stream of liquid when it encounters an obstacle and that is how this name eddy current is given to this induced currents. Okay? And we also learned that uh, this comes from uh, Faraday's law which talks about uh, electromagnetic induction or induction and the induced uh, EMF if you call that as VL is the direct result of this changing magnetic field d phi dt wherein phi is the magnetic flux. Okay. Then uh, there was a, a question as to uh, what will be the direction of the induced current. And then we saw that the answer to this question can be found by using another law which is Lange's law which uh, states that uh, the direction of the induced current uh, will be such that it will oppose any change in the primary magnetic field uh, which induce the current. Okay? So that means if the induced EMF it is VL, then uh, we saw from Faraday's law that it is uh, d phi dt and this is opposed to uh, the change in the uh, primary magnetic field. So this will introduce a negative sign in this case which will indicate that uh, the induced current is opposed to the primary magnetic field. Okay? And then uh, finally we derived uh, this parameter. impedance uh, which we will call as uh, z uh, from now onwards and this is the sum of the resistance and the inductance of the conductor in which the current is flowing. Okay?
if you resolve it in terms of uh, inductance and the resistance components, then as you saw it will be a vector like this. And uh, this is the parameter that we are going to take up uh, specifically in the next class. First we will uh, derive an expression for this and then we will see how this particular parameter is used to uh, do eddy current testing. This is what uh, we are going to take up in the next class. So, this is all I will have for today. I will see you next time and then we will discuss about uh, the other aspects and we will continue from here. Thank you.